All right, so this one is called palindrome number. It says determine whether an integer is a palindrome. An integer is a palindrome when it reads the same backward as forward. So first example they give us is the number 121 and the output's true because when you reverse 121, it's still 121. Second example they give us is negative 121. They say that it's not a palindrome because when you reverse negative 121, it becomes 121 negative. And the third example is the number 10, which is also false because one zero when reversed becomes zero one. And then it says follow up, could you solve it without converting the integer to a string? And that's exactly what we'll be doing in these videos. All right, so what is a palindrome? A palindrome is something where its original form is the same as its reversed form. So we know what a palindrome string is, Let's say we have the string A, B, A. When you reverse that, it's still A, B, A. So that is a palindrome. We can do the same thing for a palindrome number. So let's say we have the number 121. When you reverse it, it's still 121. So it is a palindrome integer. Let's say we have the number 21. When you reverse it, it becomes 12. So that's not a palindrome. The last thing to keep note of is that any negative integer is not a palindrome because when you reverse it, it looks like this. Let's say negative 121. When you reverse it, it becomes 121 negative. So that's not equal. All right, so remember all we have to do for this question is to take an integer, reverse it, and see if they're the same. And I'll show you how to reverse an integer now. All right, so what does a reversed integer look like? If we have the number 49, when you reverse it, it becomes 94. So how do we do that? We have a column over here called reversed. That's gonna keep track of the reversed number. We always initialize that reversed number to zero. Then we'll have a column called current, and that'll keep track of the current state of the original number. The original number is 49, and we'll slowly transform this to help reverse it. All right, so first thing we do is we look at the original number, 49, and what we need it to be, 94. We can see that the last number in the original number, so 9, needs to be the first number in the flipped number. So how we can do that is we can divide 49 by 10 and get the remainder. That'll look like this. So 49 mod 10 gives us nine. All right, so we're actually pretty close to what we need. Last step we have to do in order to make sure that the first number is nine is you take whatever is reversed and you multiply by 10. So zero, times 10 equals zero. And then you add those two numbers together. So nine plus zero is nine. And that gives us the first number in reversed. So now we need to remove the number nine at the end of current because we've already used it for what we need. So to do that, we take current which is 49, divide that by 10, which will give us 4.9, and then we round down. Oops, all right. Then we round down. That will give us four. So let me just move that down a little bit. Nine and current is now four. Now we just need to somehow take the four in current and move it to the end of nine to give us 94. So let's just repeat the steps that we did up here. First, you take whatever is in current and do mod 10, get the remainder. So four mod 10 gives us four. Now we need nine to somehow become 94. So again, we do what we did above. First you take nine, 
multiply that by 10 that'll give you your 90 and then you add those two to give you 94 and that is what the reverse number becomes but we're not done yet we just have to finish this off so the same thing we did above you take whatever's in current and divide it by 10 and then round down so current is 4 divided by 10 which is 0.4 round down that'll give you 0 and that's actually how you know that you're done you check whether current is 0 all right now let's get to the code what lead code gives us is a method called is palindrome and what you pass in is x which is an integer so we're just going to return whether x is the same as the reversed form of x and remember we said that any negative integer is not a palindrome so we can just start with that so if x is less than zero so if x is negative we can just automatically return false then we can return whether x equals the reversed form of x so here's a method that I have not created yet, but it's just gonna take whatever X is and reverse it. And then it's gonna compare that to X and it's gonna return whether or not those are the same. So let's implement this method called reversed integer. So var reversed integer, integer equals a function that takes in X. All right, so as we said before, we need a variable called reversed, and reversed is eventually gonna be the reversed form of x. So let reversed, and we initialize that to zero, so let reversed equal zero. I don't know why these spacings are different, okay? So remember, we also said that whatever number we get passed in, we're going to slowly transform that number and chop off the last digit in order to basically give that last digit to reversed. So with 49, you would take nine and make that the first digit of the reverse number, chop that off. So now you're left with four. And now you take four, chop that off, and you give that to the reversed integer. And here's how it's done. So we will keep doing that process, remember, until x is zero. So we start with the while loop. While x is greater than zero, which means obviously the reverse is true, which is we stop this when x is finally zero. All right, so reversed equals reversed times 10 plus x mod 10. So in the example I just used, let's say 49, we say since reverse starts off as 0, reverse times 10, that's still 0, plus x mod 10. So if it's 49, you do mod 10, that gives us the 9 you're looking for. Add that to 0, and you still have 9, which gives us the first number in the reverse number. So then what you have to do is you have to chop off the last number of the x that you're given. So x equals math.floor, x divided by 10. So this will take x, let's say again, 49, divide that by 10. That'll give you 4.9, and you round it down to give you 4. So that's going to keep happening until x is 0. And once x is 0, you'll have your fully reversed number. Then all you have to do is return the reverse number. All right, so let's run the code. It's taking a little while. Accepted. I don't know why it took so long. All right, so we submit. Okay, and our submission was nine was faster than 98% of online submissions. All right, so as usual, the code and, and written explanation are linked down below. See you next time.